Hey guys, uh, tonight I'll be showing you a little different video here on the Behringer Model D. Um, as you can see, I've got it all cracked open. Going to walk you through some of the main circuitry stuff, and uh, just kind of show you the build quality of this thing as well. Uh, for those that were expecting a uh, MFB Dominion interface video, I apologize. I thought this video here might be more critical, so I jumped kind of to this, and uh, this thing will be going back together, and I will be making a uh, MFB Dominion interface video. Um, so anyways, with that said, guys, let me show you the breakdown here of the uh, of the Behringer Model D. And I'm uh, going to show you, we'll start with the main chassis here. The main chassis is actually a Eurorack cabinet, believe it or not. It's it's a Eurorack cabinet. It's got uh, slider tracks for uh, the uh, the nuts. So you can see the mounting hardware sliding inside there, which those are actually your threaded nuts that take the, uh, the screw. So you can actually, if you wanted to put this thing in a... Uh, your rack cabinet, you can actually use this as an external expansion uh, cabinet as well. That's an idea I've been kind of playing with if I ever get into your rack stuff. Um, so that's that's really the cabinet. It's it's all metal. Like I say, it's a solid build cabinet. Uh, you know, there's no power supply in it to run your rack modules, but you know you could actually modify it, or you could use a, you know, use this just as a uh, non-powered expansion, like a multiples or something have several multiples in this cabinet here. So just some ideas for you guys. Uh, the interface, of course, I've mentioned in the past, it's all metal. And you can see the uh, the back of it here. Now, I will say, once again, guys, this is a prototype. So you're going to see some, some mock-ups on this particular unit that's probably not going to be on the production. Um, I don't know if these holes are punched or if they're drilled. I'm guessing they're probably punched. But it's very clean, very clean design there. And as you can see, I'm going to point out that you see all these metal standoffs. So you got a lot of support for this uh, main board, um, which adds to the, the feel and the quality of this unit. And they're actual metal standoffs, and I think they're actually welded to the, uh, to the jack or there. I don't know, they might be machined in. I can't really tell. But um, it's, a, it's a really good little build interface. And then of course we'll go, we'll jump over the circuit board here and I'll show you the knobs and stuff. Uh, so these are your mounting hardware for your board to interface. Uh, another nice little little thing about the synth is that uh, the rotary switches are actually mounted. They got the washers and these and the nuts here. So they're actually mounted to the interface panel which holds extra support. So that's a nice thing to have. Um, the knobs are, are, you know, really nice little knobs here. You can see. I don't know if I can get inside there or not, but uh, that's that's basically the knob design. Same thing for the big ones. You can kind of see how they work. They're uh, then actually hold in place really well. I had a hard time getting the knobs off. Actually, a few knobs, you know, the smaller knobs come off pretty easy, but the the bigger ones, then the chicken head knobs, as they're called, are you know a little tougher to get off and on, which is nice. So now I'm going to take you to the main board. And uh, I'll start by saying, once again, this is a prototype. This is a revision B circuit board. And uh, I've actually got the schematics and looked over the schematics for a revision C. So with that said, unfortunately, I, I don't have all the reference designations for all the parts on this board. But that's okay. I'm not going to actually go through all the circuitry. What I'm going to do is, for those that don't know electronics, I'm going to try to break this down and explain the, the type of circuitry this is, first of all, which this is referred to as SMD circuitry. And what that is, for those that don't know, is that back in the early days, all these components here would have been through hole, meaning that the circuit board would have had holes in it, and these parts would have been large enough with legs, and they would have actually went through the board and would have been soldered on the back side. For instance, your rotary switches, these big silver parts right here are through hole and you can see you turn it over to the back and there's your your solder connections on the back so that's that's the modern approach here and most everything you buy today is going to be SMD based circuitry so uh, you know that's just uh, the difference between something vintage and something new and that's uh, just this is the new modern technique to most uh, designs and it's cleaner, you know, you, you do get a little cleaner design and it's faster because usually a machine lays all this stuff. 
But I can tell you, before I started my synth business, I, st I, was, I worked in an aerospace company. And uh, I would troubleshoot these kind of circuits all day long. <laughs> and believe me, they'll wear your eyes out. Uh, it's a strenuous on your eyes for sure, work on this stuff. But uh, with all that said, guys, I'm going to walk you through the circuitry here and just kind of give you an idea of what you're actually buying when you get one of these. Uh, it's not a modeling synth. It is absolutely no modeling except for the 440 hertz reference. <laughs> and it's actually generated by the DAC, which the DAC, all it's doing is it's taking the MIDI, it's doing the MIDI to CV conversion, and I'm sure it's also handling your polychaining. Yes, the single handle handle uh, poly chaining modes, which means you can buy several of these things and make a poly synth. For example, if you buy four of these, you have a four voice poly synth stack synthesizer. So some really cool stuff. I was really excited to hear the news on on that particular part of this unit. Um, so this is it's analog. That's what I'm gonna make the point across: is everything in this thing is analog, and it's actually all discrete, which is really cool. Uh, the term discrete doesn't necessarily mean it's through whole parts. What that means is that each circuit is made up of a transistor or external component, so not everything's in one package. Um, for example, integrated circuit is something like this right here. You can see those legs right there. This is two op amps in one package. So that would be, that's an IC. So when you hear me use the term integrated circuit, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. When I talk about discrete, well, I'll just give you an example on this particular board. I'll show you the transistor ladder filter. Here is your transistor ladder filter, right there. And uh, in these packages, these are actual two transistors. They're two matched pair transistors per um, per uh, chip, for example. These, these are still kind of, I guess you could put them in a the category of IC because it's more than one in the package. Um, so, for example, you got, uh, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, you got five transistor packs, or ICs, if you want to call them ICs, or transistor packs. There's uh, two per pack, so it's two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten transistors right there, and that makes up your, your ladder filter and your balancing circuits. Uh, so, that's kind of how this works. Uh, some of these are actually just single transistors, which you can see these three leg parts like that for example. That's an example of a transistor or diode in some cases in surface mount techniques. Um, so yeah, so you saw the ladder filter. That's the Moog ladder filter. Um, here's your oscillators right here. So your oscillators are actually made up of the Revision 2 Mini Moog oscillator design. Meaning that you have uh, 3046 that you use it doing your uh, uh, current conversion or your voltage to current your voltage to exponential current converter is really what it is. Since your oscillators are actually current controlled and not voltage controlled, you have to convert the voltage to current, and that's what this circuit does. So you've got uh, three oscillators. Two oscillators are made up in this one circuit. Third oscillator is made up in the second circuit, just like a mini Moog. So it's, it's as I'm telling you, it's very similar to a mini Moog, um, and all your, your your mixing circuits and everything are actually discrete. Uh, as you can see by the individual transistors along the uh, the banks here. And uh, the envelope generators are made up of a mini Moog style design. So it's it's all very analog guys. That's that's what I'm I'm getting at. It's uh, it's analog, you've got the calibration stuff like you would have in a mini Moog. Um, you know things things will drift. It's uh, it's not as as bad as a, a vintage mini Moog but it still has that natural kind of thing that happens in these analog synthesizers. And uh, with that said, it, it makes it a, a really nice instrument. And if it was digital, it wouldn't drift. It would be, you know, a little bit more clean. And uh, in this case, you're still getting that natural, that kind of natural effect of analog circuitry. So it, it's really nice. And uh, so that's that's really just overview of, of, of these circuits. Like I say, I'm not going to go real in-depth with them because I honestly don't know what all I'm allowed to talk about here, but I'm just kind of giving you a good overview of, of what what's inside this thing. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, I'm, I believe I brought this up. The 440 hertz is actually the only thing that is actually a uh, digital 
sir, uh, signal and it comes from your DAC which is driven a, it's driving a 440 Hertz which is actually even better than what's in the mini mode because this is a very stable uh, circuit and since it's your tone your tune reference tone you want that to be as accurate as possible so you get a very accurate tone also when we flip this board over you can actually see it's already set up for uh, for your rack connection so you got your your rack connector there this thing actually works on plus 12 ground and then the negative 12 line is not connected so it's only running on uh, plus 12 volts and it has all the regulations and stuff. Once again, it's a prototype, so you'll see some, you know, some some things that they were working on on this particular board. But uh, basically, it has all the internal uh, regulation inside. So this thing's and it actually handles all the, you know, there's like three voltage rails in this thing, just like a mini mode. You got the plus 10, negative 10. I think there's a uh, a five volt and a nine volt, if I'm not mistaken, made up on the. Uh, on the power rails of this thing but uh anyways guys just a, a quick overview here yeah i thought this thought some of you guys might be interested in this and as you can see for those that are curious you can actually tune these things you have the uh the trim pots the range the uh the uh, scale uh so i can get my camera to here i'm trying to do this one-handed here but you can see there and also uh, you got one trim here it's called the, uh, so I can find it. I'm sorry, that was your filter stuff. That's your regeneration, calibration, your VCF range, your VCF scale. Over here is your oscillators. And then you got this one called oscillator switch. And that's actually like the octave uh, adjust in a mini moog. So after you do your, your uh, usually what I do is I'll uh, calibrate oscillator one and I'll adjust my octave to match and then I'll reference all the other oscillators off oscillator one. It allows me to actually offset the tuning too so you get a really nice beating at the low low end and I, and I usually calibrate them for the high notes to be accurate, the low notes to be just slightly out so you get the slight phase angle between the oscillators and it makes the tone of these things really sweet. Um, but guys with all the tech stuff said, uh, let me just put it out here like this. This is still a musical instrument just as that's a musical instrument. This is a classic. This is one of those instruments I wouldn't want to take and I wouldn't want to drill holes and modify and do all kind of stuff to because this is a classic. You know, this is like the 63 Corvette in my eyes of, of instruments. And this is like a really nice cheap sports car that you can add turbochargers and all this kind of stuff to because since this thing is discreet and if you're comfortable doing soldering on SMD circuitry, you could actually modify this thing to do some some even more things and um, for that reason I look at this thing as a really cool uh, instrument not only in a text mind but also as a musical instrument because like I've said in the past you can take this thing out play with it it's only 300 bucks so you're not out you know several thousand dollars if something happens to it and if you're, you know, a tech-savvy guy, you can actually work on these things. SMD is repairable, so, you know, you can work on them. Um, also, one other thing I forgot to mention, guys, I will bring this up. Some of you might be curious about these toggle switches, or these, uh, these uh, switches here. Those are actually toggle switches, believe it or not. And what they've done is uh, Behringer fitted them with these uh, caps. And so it makes it look just like the, the uh, switches just a smaller version of the uh, mini moog switches and uh, they're they're metal they're actually using a metal uh, casing which is nice uh, let's see if i can get my camera on one of these everything reflective it's kind of hard to really zoom in on here but you can see they're actually using a metal case switch and uh, it's got a metal shaft toggle so they're really good solid switches and uh, everything feels really good on this thing as i've mentioned in the past but for anybody that might have been curious about what's inside the uh, Behringer Model D, this is a look at it. This is what, what you're getting. It's a, it's a real analog synthesizer, not a modeling synthesizer. And I see some possible room for some modifications and some, uh, some really beefing this thing up to make it do some more things than it's really designed to do. Just like I have seen in some mini mooks. But like I say, that's a classic. I don't like, I always kind of cringe when these, I get these into my shop and they got holes drilled in them and you, know, you got to try to figure out what somebody else has done to them. 
but this is one of those things that you could buy cheap, modify, have fun with it, enjoy it as a musical instrument because it sounds good, and it's going to get you that mini Moog sound, and uh, you're not paying a huge price. And uh, like I say, I'm, I'm not trying to trash the mini Moog. The mini Moog is a classical instrument here. Uh, what this is is this just a great, you know, a great synth for the money, and it's going to get you some really close circuitry. Uh, in the same sense of how it functions. So uh, anyways guys, sorry to blabber on here, but uh, for those interested, thanks for watching. Appreciate all the support, and uh, there'll be more videos here to come. Take care guys.